Hello, my name is Frank Saratella. For those of you who are new to the channel, I am a miracle. I'm supposed to be dead. In 2012, Jesus gave me the gift of a second chance in life when they closed the expressways in Chicago, pulled me out of my truck, and rushed me to a trauma center. It was in 1984 that Jesus changed my life. If you'd like to read more about my testimony, click on the link below. It's my website called midnightcry.com. On it, you will find my testimony, you will find study tools to help you in your walk with the Lord, and you will find a section called Books and Writings. I've got books that are published that are on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, but you can read every one of my books for free in their entirety on my website, including the latest book, Twisting the Truth, Church Lies, Manipulating the Word of God to Build a Religious Kingdom. Um, this book started out, um, actually, it basically uh, starts like in 1984 when Jesus changed my life. And at that time, I was part of one of the fastest growing churches in Chicago called Faith Tabernacle. I was also um, made secretary of the Chicago chapter of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Association. And because of that, I was able to have dinner, uh, telephone conversations, conversations, fellowship, with people like David Wilkerson, Pat Robertson, C.M. Ward, Dwight Thompson, uh, T.L. Osborne, um, trying to remember some others. But the whole experience laid a foundation for today, what, 40 years ago, 84, 94, 204, 14, almost, almost 50 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it is about how the, how, how the whole church system has spiraled completely out of control and they've manipulated and ignored the Word of God to bring us to a point of the hypocrisy embarrassment that the church system has brought to God. If you are returning and are subscribers and follow the channel, I wanna thank you, I wanna thank you very much. I wanna thank you for your support, I wanna thank you for your emails, I wanna thank you for your telephone conversations, and I want to thank you for your donations. But I also want to give a special thanks. I want to give a special thanks to those of you who are on fixed incomes and make a sacrifice and donate to this ministry. I cannot thank you enough. You know, when I get emails from people saying, Frank, I don't have the money now, but when my check comes in on the 1st, on the 15th, whatever, that just, that just, blows me away. And I cannot thank you enough, those of you who sacrifice and send money to this ministry to support me. Thank you. Um, it's funny, it's, it's been kind of a theme because I really haven't been planning on videos. It's just that the Lord keeps throwing stuff at me, so to speak, if you want to say it that way. Um, but Last night, not last night, the night before, Sunday morning at 101, the Lord woke me up. I was woken up by a dream. And it was one of those dreams. I've only had two of them like this. The first one was on September 3rd in 2017 when the Lord gave me, I call high definition dreams. I mean, it was crystal clear about the fact that Yellowstone was going to erupt. And I've, I've shared that dream a few times. And then Sunday morning, it was another high-definition dream, which you just don't mistake in. So I wanted to get this out, and I wanted to share these dreams. Um, I'm going to actually share some dreams from the past and then get into this one. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's heartbreaking because people know something's coming, but people are not preparing the way they should. You know... In Job chapter 33, it says in verse 14, For God may speak in one way or in another, yet a man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering in their beds, the Lord opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. 
people don't realize this, and this is the sad part, and there are websites that people are sharing dreams and YouTube sharing dreams, and that's fine. And I'm, I'm just being transparent here. The Lord had given me many, many dreams early on in my in, 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 in being down here in Florida, but it wasn't until maybe the last year and a half or two years that the Lord has, has released me to share those dreams. The trap is that people will get dreams, and instead of doing introspective reflection on their own walk with God, they immediately want to become YouTube celebrities and say, God gave me a dream, and I'm supposed to do this, and you're supposed to do this, and this is what's going to happen, and that's what's going to happen. And they miss the point. The whole idea of a dream is for us to get before the Lord, humble ourselves, and ask the Lord to show us the idols in our heart and the secret sins in our heart. That's the idea. Because God is trying to prepare us to get into the ark, to be in a place of safety when all judgment and vengeance is unleashed. That being said, about a year and a half ago, the Lord had given me a dream. And in the dream, I was in outer space and I was looking at the earth. And the earth began to wobble and shake and then just rock to and fro. And then I was standing in the middle of Times Square and it was a beautiful sunny day, just business as normal. And all of a sudden, like that, the stock market crashed and there was mayhem and chaos all over Times Square. But this is what caught my attention. I was in outer space looking at America and I'm seeing military people all over America in tan uniforms. Didn't understand it. When I woke up that morning, I started doing some research and I found out that tan uniforms are actually the uniforms of the Russian military. About a year ago, the Lord gave me another dream. And in the dream, I was standing in a, in a mall. It wasn't an indoor mall. It was an outdoor mall. One of those big strip malls. It's got like Publix and all sorts of things in it. Again, nice, quiet, sunny, beautiful day. And like that, chaos, mayhem, and carnage. Dead bodies all over. Uh, people yelling, screaming, crying, uh, blood all over, dead bodies all over. And um, I took note of it. But then later that day, I was telling this to a friend of mine. I was explaining this dream to him. And he looked at me and he said, Frank, I had the exact same dream. Think about that. What are the chances of somebody having the exact same dream unless God himself wanted to confirm it and warn us? Now, last no two nights ago on Sunday morning, September 5th at 1.01 in the morning, I woke up. I didn't woke up. I was dreaming. And in the dream, I was back home in Chicago. And I was actually by my cousin's house, Jimmy Morelli. And I was being chased by the Chinese and the Russian military, and they were chasing me all over. My cousin Jimmy was trying to hide me in the house. And I woke up, and I was like, wow. I was, I was trying to just trying to comprehend and, and just process everything that the Lord was showing me. So I go back to bed, and the dream picked up. And it was... The emphasis was on the Chinese and Russian army going and searching. It wasn't so much me being chased, but the fact that both China and Russia were working together and going house to house and just taking over Chicago. Well, a lot of people don't know this, and I'm going to have the link in the bottom of this video, that as we speak, Russia and China are doing military drills together. They are working together. Why is Russia and China doing military dreams together? Think about that. You know, the last video I did, I, I talked about the 800 FEMA camps, but I didn't go into too much detail about the 800 FEMA camps. Let me give you a little detail about 
Let me give you a little insight on the 800 FEMA camps that are all over America. First off, if you do some research, you will see that the FEMA camps have all the barbed wire and everything pointed in so no one can escape. Well, why? Why would they do that? If these are friendly camps, why would they want to trap people in them? That's number one. Number two, as of right now, September 6, 2021, we're having a terrible immigration problem. And they say that Biden has been putting people in hotels. They've been shipping them to different states. They've been doing all over. Why are they not taking all of these illegal immigrants and putting them in FEMA camps? Because the FEMA camps were designed for, they, at least they told us, they were designed for the, this kind of emergency, but they're not. Think about that. And then you have the FEMA freights, the boats. And they don't look very friendly, ladies and gentlemen. If you do some research and look, and they were used during a hurricane, they look like huge floating prisons. Not a way you'd really think that FEMA would want to be treating their own American citizens, is it? Every time a culture has built prisons, it has always been for a slaughter. Stalin did it. Auschwitz and Hitler did it. And I'm sure there's other ones, too, if we did some, some backtracking. You know, I've shared this before, and I'm going to share it again. People don't realize that the Holocaust in World War II, the six million Jews that were slaughtered, was prophesied by Moses in Deuteronomy 28. And that is laying the blueprint and the foundation for all of the Christians that profess to be, people that profess to be Christians that are living hypocritical lives. The judgment of an angry God is going to fall on the religious system and they will be slaughtered. They will be slaughtered much worse than the Jews were in World War II. You say, well, Frank, how can you say that? Easy. We have the knowledge of the Word of God. The Jews back in World War II were still looking for Messiah. In some cases, they still are. But they didn't have the biblical knowledge of Jesus. Think about that. Think about the hypocrisy in the religious system where churches have become a business, where churches have become fashion shows, where churches have been a playground for men and women to indulge in their fantasies, their lusts, their perversions, and it's become a dwelling place of demons in the name of Jesus. How do you think God feels about that? How do you think God feels when there's a hundred mil, over 100 million Bibles printed every year and we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah? How do you think God feels about that? How do you think that God feels when you have over 350,000 churches all through America and America leads the world in abortion? The America leads the world in violence and people in jail. Where's all this Christianity, ladies and gentlemen? Where's all this love for Jesus? And there's the problem. Churches have changed, excuse me, churches have changed loving Jesus for only believing in him. And God is not interested in you believing in Jesus. He's interested in you loving him. If you love him, you will keep his words. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. If you love Jesus, you will die for Jesus as Jesus died for you. If you love Jesus, you will give up your life for Jesus as Jesus gave up his life for you. It's not believing. There's going to be multitudes of people that are going to die and go to hell because they thought all they had to do was believe in Jesus and that they could have one foot in the world and one foot in churches. I'm not even going to say God's word because they're not even following God's word. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We are living in a time that has never been in the history of America. America will never be the same. They're using this whole COVID thing to control people, to manipulate people, to scare people. It has nothing to do with truth. This is all about an agenda. Remember that. And this is God's way of starting the, the judgment of the moth on America that is slowly breaking down the system and then he will unleash his vengeance. You can read Hosea chapter 5, the two types of judgment God has, the judgment of a moth and the judgment of a lion. Sodom and Gomorrah face the judgment of the lion. America is, gonna, is facing two. We are slowly being eaten away systematically by God's judgment because God in his love is trying to wake us up and turn to him with our whole heart. And then when they say peace, peace, sudden destruction will come. And just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, God will reign and unleash all hell on earth. And all those people waiting for rapture are going to be terrified when they find out that there was no rapture when they thought the rapture was. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot encourage you enough. Get in the Word of God. It is more important for God to be talking to you by reading the Word than you praying. God's not interested in your prayers if you're living in sin. If you're living in hypocrisy, God's not hearing your prayers. Oh, he may do you a favor here and there because he's trying to get your attention. But God needs to talk to you. How does a child grow up? The child grows up because the parent is constantly talking to the child and telling him, this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong. Don't do this, don't do that. You need to be in the Word. I had a young man come to me yesterday. He said, Frank, can I talk with you? I said, sure. And he told me he was having some problems. And the first question I asked him is, are you spending much time in the Word? And he hung his head and said, no, not really. How can your life change if you're not even giving any attention to God. Chaos and anarchy comes in a person's life because God's trying to show discipline to get their time to turn to Him. That's the core. God is trying to get your attention to turn to Him, to open His Word, and so that He can teach you who He is and how much you need Him. God's not interested in prayers. Think about it. Six times, six times, Jesus says in John 14, 15, and 16, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Six times he says that. Why are prayers not getting answers? Because we're not walking in the covenant of God. We're not walking in obedience to God. We are not dying to ourselves, and we are friends of the world, and we're an enemy of God. You think about that. You got pastors behind pulpits wearing tattoos. You got pastors behind pulpits wearing earrings. Guys don't want to be guys. Girls don't want to be girls. And the Christian community accepts it and they approve of it because they're looking for quantity of people and not quality of people. Nobody wants to talk about sin anymore. It's an all-inclusive program. It's a congregation of compromise and God is saying enough is enough. The sin and the celebration of sin has reached heaven and God is going to unleash vengeance on the whole Christian community. And people are going to be terrified and shocked when it when it falls. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I cannot encourage you enough, ladies and gentlemen. Get in the Word of God. Don't let anything get between you and Jesus. Read the Word of God, obey the Word of God, and wrestle with God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 has to become a reality to all of us, including me. Just because I get to share things does not mean I'm exempt. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your wrestling against sin. We need to wrestle against sin and give it up. Our problem is we enjoy sin. We enjoy rebellion. We enjoy pride. We enjoy lust. And we've got to put it to death. It doesn't magically disappear. You have to die to it. That's why Paul says, I die daily. That's why it says in Psalms 116, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saint. Not that some guy is, live, is laying in a casket. It's that we suffer in the flesh and we give up sin. That's how we prove our allegiance and our loyalty and our faithfulness to a holy God.
it's impossible for us to love Jesus too much. But every person in hell is there because they love Jesus too little. Ladies and gentlemen, search your hearts for your idols. Ask the Lord to show you the secret sins in your heart and prepare to meet the vengeance of an angry holy God. Thank you and good night.